Hi, Mickey. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm back in LA after a long cross-country trip that uh, involved going to both conventions Ooh. and also going to Wisconsin to see uh, Paul Ryan's challenger get clobbered. But, uh, you know, he got 16% of the vote. That's uh, 11 more percent than I got. So <laughs> you, had, you had hoped he would get more like 61, though, right? I was hoping he'd get 30. Mm. Uh, that Ryan cranked up uh, the Republican machine, and uh, uh, they can turn out votes there. They're very good at it. They've been through four very close uh, Walker recall elections type things. And they can get out their people. So um, I, I hope Neil, I hope he runs again. I think he, he already got he got Ryan to flip on a major position. He got Ryan to say he wouldn't bring up the Trans Pacific Partnership trade deal in this Congress, which really? was a chance for passage. So he even with his sixteen percent of the vote, he basically killed TPP unless uh, Ryan weasels out of his promise, which he may well. Why would Ryan make a concession to a guy who's getting sixteen percent of the vote? Because a good politician panics before it's absolutely necessary. A and good politician and a bad public servant, yes. Does well, those he, things. He, yeah, you know, and plus maybe he thought TPB was doomed anyway. In fact, that's how he phrased it. He said, well, the votes aren't there anyway, so. So, Mickey, do you think we should have introduced you, or do you think you, you maintain needs no introduction status? Because you so rarely grace our site with your presence anywhere. There are people, whole generations have been born and gone on to to get Social Security and die since we did our first dialogue 11 years ago. Isn't it better if I'm just this mysterious race who appears? Okay. And, and, uh, let's let's yeah. introduce you inductively rather than deductively by, by, like, establishing some data points about you, starting with, Mickey, do you support Donald Trump for president? Because I think a reasonable person who read your Twitter feed, and by the way, what is your Twitter handle? Kaus Mickey? Uh, Kaus Mickey At Kaus Mickey, any reasonable person would conclude that you support Donald Trump. I don't think so. I think people have gone hysterical. I think the respectable, respectable, my respectable friends have all gone berserk. If you say anything nice about Trump, they say, "Well, you support Trump," and they try to shame you. I, I, I'm, I have written that I haven't decided. I have two months to decide. That is the one and, thing you've and written. That's the same thing I did with Bush and Gore, and why can't he, why you know it, Trump has some. Great virtues. On the other hand, he seems a little crazy. Uh, so the, yeah, I don't like that. I'm troubled that, by that. That is the only finger, thing you've written. Point. So, uh, so I'm trying to make up my mind whether the threat of Trump outweighs the promise of Trump. That is the only it's thing like you've written. Thing to do. That is the only thing you've written that would leave one in doubt as to whether you're supporting Trump. Everything except for that disclaimer indicates that in your heart you support Trump. But you're, oh, anyway, you and John Kasich are reserving judgment. I judges. definitely support him in my heart. The question is whether I support him in my head. Oh, I see. So, so well, that's news. Are you now announcing that you support him in your heart? We're bringing no, news I mean, here. I, like, I, 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 I would like to see somebody, you know, blow up the existing structure of government and has to have something better come into place. Not the existing structure, but the existing, you know, alignment of conventional thinking. I like the idea that he's against... Uh, foreign wars of regime change and nation building, oh. as I suspect you do. Uh, I First like the of all, he's not for like against any of that stuff. He's like totally that. unpredictable on the foreign policy front. Unpredictable, and as we learned last week, he may not be very predictable on the immigration front, Hillary, which is the issue Hillary, that's we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Hillary is all too predictable, uh, as Paul Wolfowitz just indicated when he said he'd probably support her. Uh, and she did support a disastrous intervention in Libya, so that's not a point in their favor. I'm not a big Hillary fan. Yeah, let me, I mean, look. Let, but, finish, let, me fi let me finish my catechism. He he doesn't want to screw around with entitlements. He wants to restrain trade and restrain immigration to protect the people at the bottom of the working population of society, unskilled workers who do basic work and have to compete with immigrants and cheap labor abroad, and he wants to protect them. I think that's a good thing. Uh, whatever happened to the rawls maximin principle, you... you Maximize the well-being of the least among us. So that's what he's trying to do. And those he's got are all a funny way of showing it. He's against raising the minimum wage. He's against raising the minimum wage. He said he's against raising the minimum wage, and I, I you know, the minimum wage is, uh, is 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 a small part of the problem. If you actually have a tight labor market, 
That'll do much, he's, much he's more. He's against yeah, he's yeah. against Obamacare, which which at the lowest, really low income levels, greatly expanded access to Medicaid. I'm, look, Obamacare is a mixed bag. It's expanded access, but the exchanges are cratering. Right, so. but, but you're talking about the least among us, and the one thing it unequivocally did, except in those states whose Republican governors refused to let it happen, is expand access to medical care among among really low income people through Medicaid. Well, I'm for I, I'm I look. That's not a plus in his favor. I'm I'm for uh, I I don't first Medicaid shouldn't even exist. It should be folded into whatever system is available to the rest of the population. But until that happen until that happens. I'm all for expanding Medicaid, but the essence of Obamacare, we could have expanded Medicaid. The essence of Obamacare was these exchanges. And for years while it was being considered, all the wonks of Wonk Blog and Vox assured us that no, there wasn't going to be a death spiral. That's one person. You're talking about one person here. Mention his name. Might well be a death spiral. You're talking about Ezra Klein, all the wonks of the two sites that Ezra Klein ran. (laughs) Yeah, it was basically Ezra Klein, but but he has people writing for him. Sarah Cliff and Dylan Matthews, so you know, and a bunch of other people. Yeah, so, yeah. so um, well, back to this bi- whole business. If you're talking about the things and, you're, you're glad, oh, no, hold on, the things you're glad that Trump would do. The whole idea of your inferring anything from what he said about what he will do was kind of blown apart last week. Where in one of the most gratifying moments in all of political history, on the very day Ann Coulter released her book in Trump We Trust. Donald Trump betrayed her trust on the very issue that she had said it was most important he not betray her trust on. Isn't that wonderful? And, does, and doesn't that just convince you that actually this guy will do anything and, it was, and you can't predict anything about, about what he would do as president except that he will, he will except for the ill-advised tweets? Well, first, if he had just said, look, I'm backing off my, my promise to deport everybody, which is, was probably a... Uh, not a very smart or necessary promise to make. Nobody really cares about that. Uh, he would uh, he, he would just have done it, and, and, and he would have backed off, and that would be done. Uh, instead, he's entered this long, agonizing, idiotic process where nobody quite knows what he thinks. Is it just deportations? Is he softening generally across the board? So it, it, politically, strategically, it's been bad for him. Luckily, it's before Labor Day. It was hilarious that he did it. He, he said he was softening. On the day and and book by the out. way, she reacted negatively, so somebody does care about that, apparently. On the other hand, she, re- she reacted very well. She said this could be the shortest book tour in history. She slapped him upside the head, and he changed. So, What is uh, his current position? You know, so, well, he's giving a major immigration address Wednesday, where I hope he clarifies that there was a trial balloon uh, today, which I think is bogus, that he was, doesn't want to build the wall. He wants to build a virtual wall, mm-hmm. which is... As, as my friend Mark Krikorian says, that's like bogus language, like making them pay back taxes, which indicates you're not serious. Uh, every country that's actually tried to keep people out has built a real wall, not a virtual wall. So, um, uh, but I think that's, I think that's a fake trial balloon. But we'll, we'll find out on Wednesday. If he doesn't, if he doesn't actually lay this issue to rest on Wednesday and say what he actually thinks in clear enough ways so that there's not this air of, uncertainty and mystery, uh, then he really is totally incompetent. So what's the minimum he has to say on Wednesday to, ma- to maintain your support, even though, of course, we know you don't actually support him? But you know what I mean. He's already said he wants, to, you know, as you know, Bob, the important thing is not so much will there eventually be an amnesty, but the timing. Does, do we put the enforcement measures in place before there's an amnesty? Once there is an amnesty or any legalization, uh, the enforcement Measures will be systematically undermined by the left and by the business community. So you got to get them done first before you do the amnesty. And that's the key point I would like to see him make. It's not completely clear he understands that. And you had settled settle for E-Verify as a means of dealing with the situation in the country, border aside? Um, I, and you want a visa tracking system because more and more people overstay their visas. And it seems like that should be doable in this age where... Everybody's tracked every move they make. And just so, qu- just quickly, what is E-Verify for, for people? E-Verify like is a really system uh, where businesses, before they permanently hire somebody, can check to see if they're legal. Uh, there are some difficulties business people have said, which is how do you if you uh, if you somebody comes up no you know it's, this person doesn't seem to be legal, 
Can you fire them? Will they sue you for discrimination? The whole dance you have to go through as a business owner is it has some peril in it, and they should eliminate the peril. But 20% of businesses use this now, and if it gets up to 90 95%, that will shut off the job magnet for a lot of the legitimate labor market. So uh, presumably that will reduce the incentive for people to come here illegally okay. so to he's work. So he's got to do E-verified visa tracking. Does he have to build an actual wall at the border? I would like to see an actual wall. I think that's important. You know, the, the pro we have a specific problem. We have a problem generally with the world. We have a specific problem with Mexico, which is not without reason. They see a lot of our Southwest territories, territory that they've always come and gone from, that was maybe stolen from them, and they don't recognize the legitimacy of the southern border. Whether that's rational or not, there's a border now. And, you know, we need a wall. We'll send the message that, yes, we are serious about the border. It's also very effective. It's worked everywhere it's been tried. Uh, you know, th there is poll hard polling data in Mexico showing that a majority of Mexicans think Mexicans have a right to come into the United States. Ray, do you think Mexicans have a right to come to the United States? Me? Yes. Legally. I mean... Well, that's the point. They, they, um, what I'm against is, I mean, what I'm most against is the whole round up the 11 million and, uh, you know, torment people who came here back when we were saying with a nod and a wink, it was fine. Sorry, what was a nod and a wink? I missed For the years line. and years, we basically said, look, even though it's technically illegal, you can come over here and you can line up in front of, you know, Home Depot and it's all fine. I am very much against now tormenting those people and rounding them up and stuff like that. Well, the, oh, I, I, look, I'm that, not against border enforcement. That's the part he's going to back off of. I know. So, <laughs> well, we'll see. He's happy. We'll see. Yeah. But one question is, how much can he back off of without hurting himself happy. politically? Because, you know, I've got to think that, you know, it seems that his base, the Trump base, as opposed to the conservative per se base, in, in, includes a lot of people who don't, might not normally vote, right? I mean, I've got to think they have to be pretty right. energized for all of them to turn out, right? Well, well the, he can't back off of the wall. That's why I was so insane this trial balloon this morning. Yeah, I think he can back off of deportations uh, as long as he does all these other things. And the base, I think, will forgive him. Everybody, that's what everybody's reporting. They go to the rallies and people say, sure. Uh, so he, he has a lot of goodwill with his base that he's frittering away. He should, if he's going to, if he's going to soften, he should soften. He should say where he's softening and be done with it. Don't, don't rip off the Band-Aid. Then put the well, band-aid back on so you can rip it off well, again. This, this leads to the question of how you can even be flirting with supporting him. Because I know immigration is important to you, and I know he's the first guy to come along in a long time who's kind of singing your tune. But his sheer ineptness on a day-to-day -day basis as a candidate, I mean, most recently, this amazing Dwayne Wade tweet, I mean, doesn't it, doesn't it convince you that he would be a disaster as a president, whatever you think of any one policy? No, it's, it's certainly troubling. It's not a point in his favor. Uh, on the other hand, so far he, he, you know, he he tends to listen to his his good people on immigration, Senator Sessions and, and Sessions' former aide Steve Miller, uh, and maybe I assume Steve Bannon is giving him the same advice. And uh, so he he comes out in the right place. So he gets points for that. The flailing and the listening to the last person who talked to him. Is is, is, is is certainly troubling, and, and you know maybe that'll ultimately be disqualified. Well, I mean, it's just beyond. It's it's beyond all this. I mean, let's go back to his iconic moment for me, making fun of a disabled reporter. That just it continues to blow me away. If I had told you two years ago, someday you may consider uh, supporting a presidential candidate who, during a speech, starts making fun of a disabled person, mocking a disabled person, you would have said no way. And, 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 and it's not even clear which is more kind of disturbing, the sheer, the, the lack of, like, political judgment there, the lack of self-control, or the sheer grossness of it. I mean, seriously. And, and you know. I haven't looked. My, it, it's indefensible. My impression is two things would work. He had reasonable grounds to be really pissed off at this guy. He was, I think he was denying a story that he, uh, that Trump you know, thought he'd written or that he's something he knew. And second, he was trying to entertain, okay? Wait, he had grounds to be pissed off. The guy was just telling the truth. I forget what the situation is. The I, guy I, was I, accurately you know, conveying what he had written in a piece. I, I, I don't know. There's a... Um, it was one of these cases where Trump just made shit up 
And the guy called him on it, and that's inexcusable. And so Trump starts mocking his disability. Anne has a long section on this in her book. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm sure that will straighten you out. I don't have the book handy, and I haven't read it. So um, I haven't gotten my copy yet. So uh, I, 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 don't ha- I, I didn't look into that. It, okay, it, then the Dwayne Wade tweet. That's just like within the last 72 hours. What's going on with that? What's he thinking even? What's in his head? How does but, he think that helps him? I, must, I confess, I, when I saw that Dwayne Wade's cousin had, killed, had, had been killed, was my first thought, oh, my God, this is horrible, an innocent person has been gunned down? Or was my first thought, I guess Trump is right about the horror oh, of the oh, innocent? Oh, oh, right. No, I, I, I agree I that don't humans... I say which was my first thought. The right, other but, one was my second But I'm talking about the, the political judgment and lack of self-control. I mean, do you think it was a politically well-advised tweet? No, it's stupid. He's done it twice. That's in a what row I now. mean. What kind of president would this guy make if you have That's to put him in a straitjacket to keep him from blowing up the world? We we don't do we do we do we elect presidents because they're wonderful people and compassionate? No, and they, no, Mitty. Again, we, I'm talking about the political judgment and lack of self control, not the what the compassion. I'm talking about the the how ill advised the tweet was. When you're president, that stuff matters. Well, I assume they'll stop him tweeting if he's who? President. Who? The, the same people who can't stop him now? They have a large national security bureaucracy, the, and all of whom he can fire. <laughs> Look, these are all points against him. He has a, a bunch going for him too. <laughs> well, the prospect of four yeah. years of Hillary is incredibly dreary. Well, dreary, but the world it, is still there in the end. Right? No, that's their virtue, but uh, <laughs> that's about it. Okay, um, that well, I, I consider that a considerable virtue, actually, the continued survival of the human species. But I realize immigration is important to you, and maybe you're right. Who's to say which is more important? Um, so uh, the alt right, you mentioned uh, Steve Bannon. Oh, Do you I know just, Steve Bannon? You, have you met him? I've met him. I, I was, you know, I wrote I wrote four articles for him when I because they got me at the conventions and I liked them, and so I I they, well, they you like bright you like Breitbart. You're coming out. I like, I like Breitbart himself, and I like the people who are at Breitbart now, and they're on my side on immigration, and they do a lot of good work. They also have this alt-right strain that I sort of avoided. Uh, and is that, that's it. post-Breitbart. That wasn't there when Andrew Breitbart was alive. Is that true? Uh, not that I saw. I mean, I, I didn't know Andrew's deepest thoughts. Uh, I never but it wasn't saw. on the site, I mean. That's the Bannon era, the alt-right. I, that's a very good question, and I, I think you're right, but I'm not sure. I have, you'd have to go back and look at. Uh, but uh, it's it's um, mainly this guy Milo is uh, truly horrible, truly horrible human being. I, I have I, I, I have no opinion on Milo. He's certainly uh, a and good. It shames writer. me that one of my two dogs is named Milo. I'm thinking about changing his name. You know, I stand with him, but. But now that now that the alt right has become an issue, and it, you know it sort of should be an issue, they're out there. They do tend to support Trump. Trump has sort of given them a uh, Trump's candidacy, even if Trump doesn't support them or embrace them. He's they 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 you know taken shelter under his candidacy to to try to go public. Um, the uh, the the intellectual leader seems to be this guy Jared Taylor, who runs a magazine called American Renaissance, and bizarrely. Uh, did you see James Fallis' tweet on him? I didn't. Somebody raised Jared Taylor, and James Fallis said, he's a lovely man, I knew him in Japan, and he wrote a great book in J- about Japan. So since then, they've diverged ways. Uh, but, you know, it was just it was an interesting human moment on the web, of which there are all too few. Uh, he, he has now come out with what, with what is basically, hey, all you alt-right, all you people who are now interested in the alt-right, and now that Hillary's attacked, this is what we stand for. And and it's very clear, and uh, it, it's not what I stand for. It's sort of, it's 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 slight. You know, first it's white identity politics, and I think identity politics in general is bad. So why should white people emulate this uh, this tendency that we don't like? Uh, second, it says that uh, you know only the the most offensive se- se- sentence is uh, only people who are of the stock of the people who founded our country are capable of maintaining its institutions, which is sort of a racialist view of... Kind of. What's, yes, kind of. Was, uh, of what's necessary 
to uh, maintain our institutions, which I don't buy. I do, I do give some credence to the, the Lion Coulter case, which is cultures can be anti-democratic, and you want to be careful what, that you assimilate whatever cultures you admit to, uh, to you know, America, that, they, that they're assimilated to our way of life. Uh, I think that's a valid argument. I don't know danger, which, which major cultural element are, is in danger of subverting our democracy right now? Well, none of them that are in, none of them are in sufficient. What, you, what, what, what is Ann Coulter worried about? Muslims? If you, if you, um, I'm sure she's worried about Muslims. If her book talks about Hmong and Somali, Somalis, and it, 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 in general, it's, it's a, you know, his argument is that diversity is not strength. So that's her argument. Uh, but that, Taylor goes way beyond that. Taylor says it's race. Well, yeah, not well, yeah, in fact, the alt right first came to my attention on Twitter. In the form of anti-Semitism. I mean, a couple of months ago when I first heard of them, that was what was associated with them. It is associated with it, and it seems completely bizarre. I understand why if you're, a, you know, if you're living in the United States, you would be, you know, pissed off at the, at the major groups that get affirmative action and preferences. And you say, I'm passed over, so a, a African-American or a Latino can get a preference. And I, that, that annoys me. That, but, but. Anti-Semitism seems like a total irrationally leg irrational legacy prejudice. It's almost, isn't it almost make, enough to make you suspect that it's kind of a broad-based bigotry as, a, as opposed to some logically rigorous ideology? No, because it's very rigorous. Why would they cling to this anti-Semitism? It's, 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 uh, anyway, there, how many of these people are there? Not many. Uh, you know, none of the stories on the menace of the alt-right yeah, but, but, many, but it you know, is relevant. I think they're in the tens of thousands. But look, if, if, if Donald Trump hires a guy who calls him chief executive, which may or may not mean he's running the campaign, this is a whole other issue. What would the org charts look like in a Trump administration? But in any event, he's one of two people who may be running the campaign right now. And if Donald Trump hires him, he is answerable for the guy's uh, ideological associations. And, 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 and by your own account, it seems to be the Bannon era that has welcome the alt-right onto well, right I don't know that he's I don't know that he's alt-right so much as Milo he knows that Milo's well he's star. running the organization that has embraced oh, Milo we well, I have to read Milo's article I've been avoiding it. I don't well, know to what the it's article he's a horrible person I mean well whether he's a horrible person or not I don't know he wrote a piece about the alt-right and I don't know whether he embraces it fully or not oh, so oh you mean Bannon's article no, Milo's article. I don't think Bannon is. Well, written just about look it. at Milo's whole record of stuff he says. Well, what does he like, say? Like, I, like lesbians are people uh, who couldn't, who can't get dates with who guys think are ugly, and so they become that's, lesbians. That's standard sexist frat house. That's not alt right. Well, so that was what was the crazy. Better in our political that was so crazy about Hillary combed Breitbart for alt right headlines, and the best she could come up with. Yep. with is a headline that said birth control makes women ugly. I don't think they did a good job. I don't think they did a good job of combing the headlines because whenever I went to see, you know, in, in fact, just today I saw this was maybe attributed to maybe something Bannon himself said. It was either Bannon or Breitbart. And it was like uh, maybe it's on Breitbart. It was like uh, Muslims don't come to escape persecution. They come to America to Per, impose their persecution on Americans. Now, come on, we know that's not true of 99% and probably way more of the Muslims who come here. That is just rank bigotry. But that, but that is, no, it's not. It's, of it's, course it's, it it's, is. It's, it's, it's You're saying, look, this was a generalization about Muslims. It was saying all or at least most Muslims who come to America want to impose their religion on America. You think that has any kind of chance of being true, Mickey? Well, there there, there is this troubling poll that showed a large... Uh, I figure it was a majority or minority of of the Muslim population here uh, supports Sharia, whatever that means. Sharia is the same as Orthodox Jews or uh, wanting to have a wedding in accordance with Jewish whatever. Okay. Sharia was... itself has nothing to do with imposing anything on people by itself. Okay. Anyway, anyway, it did seem to me there's a long way from that to race realism and saying that only descendants of the white stock in America can uh, maintain our institutions. It's just, saying, it's just, it's just uh, I mean, it, Breitbart it, it, has got creepy... It's a generalization about, about Muslims. But 
you're people's there's just not that much that that, that I've seen that shows that Bannon and certainly Breitbart, you know, have that view. Certain Breitbart did have the view, which I disagree with, which is, you know, that the terrorists have smacked us and we have to smack them back twice as hard. That's the view you've been fighting back uh, for most of the time I've uh, we've been doing this, which is, you know, why if, if we if we if we hit them for every time they hit us, we're playing their game and we're probably making more terrorists. So that that would be my view. Actually, I mean, if you could if you could smack terrorists per se, I it wouldn't that. bother me so much. It's like. It's all the people you inadvertently smack in the process, but right. Well, but they are, they're always those. So uh, there are uh, right. La- anyway, last t- so it, it, that view Breitbart had, but that is not an all right view. That's just sort of a standard, uh, you know, uh, sort of this is Munich all over again view of of the war on terror. So um, you can tar Andrew with that, but I don't think you can. No, not Andrew. I'm, t- I'm talking about Bannon. I mean, look, Trump is answerable for Bannon. He gave him, that he hired him, he gave him that title. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, who Bannon has embraced. And he's embraced Milo and he's embraced everything on that site. I, I, do editors embrace everything that's on their sites? I don't think that's true. Well, anyway. In, in the case of Breitbart, where the whole site is clearly a unified propaganda campaign and not like a th- let a thousand flowers bloom unified. philosophy. It was, split, it was split early on between Cruz supporters and Trump supporters. Well, those days are over. Some, some of the money people who were behind him, the Mercers, I believe, were Cruz supporters, not Trump supporters. By the way, little asterisk question. Like, Matt Drudge was apparently in the tank for Trump early on, as Observer said. And, that's, and of course, he has a long association with Breitbart, first the person, and, and, and uh, well, a long, Breitbart himself got his start via Drudge. Do you know why Drudge, I mean, Drudge is kind of an opaque character. Do you know why he would support Trump? I think he agrees with what, what Trump's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that's certainly my impression, is that... Uh, you know, it's an anti-globalist, that would be the, the, the umbrella position, skeptical of free trade, skeptical of free immigration. Uh, I, I don't know quite what other, uh, you know, Drudge has a, a bunch of interests where he's way interested more than other people. I mean, to do with uh, abortion, I know he's very concerned about, but uh, I don't know why Trump, Trump wouldn't be your candidate if you if you cared about stopping abortion. So I, I think he, he he's... Probably for Trump, the same for the basically the same reasons that I'm for Trump. It's just he's probably made oh, up his mind. Nick, you, you know what you just said? I know, I know what I just said. I said, and then, but then there are the reasons why I'm against Trump. So I'm <laughs> no, I don't think you can extract oh, that possibility from the sentence you actually uttered, Nick. Let's, let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about. Um, I'm allowed one. I'm sending you. that clip to Jim Fallows, Mickey. He's been hounding you on Twitter. Oh, you'll be to very get happy. you to declare. What? What? He's so serious about this. What Jim's is, a what serious is, what is, guy. Man. It, 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 it's so weird. Anyway, um, uh, so he's he's the good cop. Bob alters the bad cop. John Alter, you're saying John Alter's a bad very, cop? Fallows is very gentlemanly. Alter just plows in like a tank. He's an old uh, friend of yours. He's trying to help you. Mickey, I'm trying to help you. We're all just trying to stage an intervention. They're trying to help me save my career. Yes, among other things. So, you, okay, you want to turn to some things we may, may actually agree on? So we, we, we've passed our half-hour mark, so let's just quickly wrap quickly it up. things we probably agree on. I, I think Trump has a real chance of winning still, personally. You probably okay, do, too. That's what I was going to turn to. Yeah. It seems to me he does have... It, it's hard to see where... If you look... Overall, in the polls, he has a chance to win. He's only like six, seven points behind. And, and the gap is slightly narrowed over the last right. two weeks, which has gotten very little comment. If you look at Slate, it's, if that's state by state, it's much harder for him because he's behind in Pennsylvania. Yeah but, yeah, but today a Pennsylvania poll came out showing him only three behind in Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah. Then it's all possible again. Okay. Never mind. So, uh, so it is possible. I... I um, and plus, I mean, just anything can happen. Uh, you know, Julian Assange says he's got emails that he knows will embarrass Hillary that he's going to, un- you know, anything can happen. It's a crazy world. And, 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 and people keep saying, you know, it's never happened that a candidate five points ahead in late August lost. Well, 
if this year has taught us anything, it's that this year is unlike all other years right. in the history of president. And there's the, there's the, the thesis that things move faster now than they did, associated with our friend Bruce Feiler. And uh, so um, that, uh, you know, that, that means that there's a whole lot more drama that they can pack in these last two months than, say, in the Dole Clinton race of 96. Uh, the, there's the Epstein sex scandal. He hasn't brought up Monica yet. He, uh, there are all sorts of... Well, the Epstein sex powerful. scandal is just Bill, right? Well, there's a Trump everybody book. assumes Bill is trouble. That's that won't be news. Well, but there are underage women involved in the Epstein sex scandal, well, so that that's be a day's headlines. But that's not going to become like that, clearer. That's a new wrinkle. But they they claim that Trump is somehow involved too. So all that remains to be seen, and maybe there'll be a mutual assured destruction pact to keep it. To, but Trump hasn't. Trump has done much. I expect him to be much more effective against Hillary. Than he's been so far. Maybe he's saving it till after Labor Day, but there's the whole the whole Monica thing, which a whole generation of people maybe doesn't know that much about, and which will rattle Hillary. That's the point. Uh, the, the, there's a whole a whole trade thing where you know he, he hasn't made o- an issue of obvious things, which is Buick is now selling a car that's made in Japan. Everybody's they're always worried that GM is going to start making all its cars in Japan. Well, the foot's in the door. Uh, and I'm sure they're gonna. They, I'm sure they're gonna make money on this Chinese-made Buick. So uh, there's that. There's. I, there's, I, there's I, that. I think he's gotten the mileage. He's gonna get out of trade, and he's got his own little problems there, like all the Trump labels that say "Made in China" and the and the fact that he hired that's, these Polish workers. And that's time so for hypocrisy. I mean, uh, trade is still a big issue in Ohio and, and Pennsylvania, and he's got to win those states. Yeah. Um, the uh, the and, and you know um, instead he's. Uh, Byron York thinks he should make a big deal about the 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 the, the death spiral of the Obamacare exchanges. I don't know about that because that appeals to sort of voters who he already has, which is the people who are poor enough to be worrying about the Obamacare exchanges. But it also it also involves all sorts of freelance writers and people who have to go in the independent market, and Obamacare is not a pleasant experience for them. So uh, there's that. But the, 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 he just I expect him to methodically take her apart. And he hasn't done that. But maybe he will start. Well, I think, you know, he's just not show, showing himself to be very deft in general. But um, I do think, you know, it's it's just an all bets are off year. Hillary emails, you know, I mean, I mean, there could be every week there could be a new little anecdote involving the Clinton Foundation that sustains that theme. There's both the 15,000 emails and the Julian Assange emails. There's the possibility of a terrorist attack that that this time Trump might handle uh, more deftly than he handled Orlando. Who knows? Um, uh, which, but, you but, know, Anthony Weiner could tweet a, a picture of his uh, bulging junk while he's in bed with his child. I mean, that, that's oh, Mickey, that surely that happen. couldn't happen. Can you believe that guy? We saw the documentary. Have you seen the, the Weiner documentary? I have not, but you should... But you, that's just my phone will ignore it. But you should, um, you should like you, what Weiner was doing. He was telegraphing to this woman he was sexting, sexting that he had high male parental investment. He was saying, "I'm a good match because I have I've been investing this time in my child." That just made him more attractive. Maybe Bob. he had read he had read the Moral Animal and he was using the Bob Wright sexting the proven technique. Proven Bob Wright sexting technique. The uh, he's a it's funny. The documentary kind of humanized him a little in my eyes for the first time. Um, you know, here's a never before told anecdote. Somebody uh, uh, who was working for me at one point a couple years ago lined up. Uh, Anthony Weiner agreed to come on Blogging Heads and talk to a certain person, uh, and, and whom I won't mention. It was all set, and I found out about. It. I said, "I'm sorry, this site has some standards, man." So I. I, I asked, what? What kind of promoter are you? I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, but but you know, I will. Uh, I'll go to heaven for this or something. I know the site will be a failure, but I will go to heaven. I mean, he wasn't going to sex right there on blogging heads. Oh, maybe it's, it got me in a weak moment. Look, I'm not known for my promotional skills. That would have been fantastic. I'm not known for my promotional skills, but this site has standards. Okay, and now I feel vindicated. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but his child is in the picture? What? This is, 
Well, the child crawled into the shot. What was he supposed to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough about him. The other, the other thing we might agree on is uh, media bias against Trump. Yes. Like, there's a lot of it, which is okay with me. In fact, I just worry that it's so over the top that it will that it won't work. It's so obvious, you know. I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, two things. First of all, if Trump is going to consistently trash and insult a group of people, he has to understand they're going to want payback. And this is another reason not, not to want him to be president. He seems not to understand that you can't trash the media 24-7 without them wanting payback. Uh, but... But um, second, I think, look, the, it, it's an interesting uh, kind of experiment in what happens when virtually America's entire establishment, you know, el elites left and right, set out to stop someone. Can they do it? And, and I'm not sure they, they can. I, I, and that's why I, I, I just kind of worry that the media bias is almost too overt. Well, it's certainly overt. It's certainly unprecedented. It's, it's basically all hands on deck. They all think, if I don't do everything I can to stop Trump, I'm responsible for the incineration of the planet. That's basically the, seems to be the mental attitude. And the result is, as you say, sort of hysterical. Even good reporters, like at the New York Times, where they, they, you know, they say, this is unprecedented. He's thrown pluralism into the dumpster. Uh, it's, um, it, 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 it is so uh, so ridiculous that I do think it, it's, it's less effective than if it were more subtle and insidious. I agree with everything you just said. There are not that many people who agree with you. I mean, Kinsley does, but there's a whole group out there who think the press has been doing Trump's bidding, which is insane. Well, it's, it's just kind of obvious, and, and it gets and, and it's the reason that the possibility of his winning is, I think, underappreciated. I mean. Like right. when they do a political analysis story, like there are all these stories about how, wow, things are so hopeless for Trump that Republicans are trying to figure out X, Y, and Z. And they always call these Republican analysts who they know hate him. So-and-so worked with, with Mitt Romney, and he says this about Trump. I mean... Stuart Stevens and Mike Murphy think right. this strategy won't work for Trump. Right. Um, so, no, it, it's, it's, it's pretty... Glaring. I mean, it's, it's sometime if we if we uh, if we have time, we can do a longer analysis on the nuances, like the New York Times approach to it versus the Washington Post approach. They're different. They right? are. They do that. What? That's, you have one minute to explain to me why they're different. Well, it's just it has to do with the different web strategies. The Washington Post has become more of a clickbaity site, I would say, and and they're better at getting on the news quick. And doing these, these, you know, webby headlines like, you know, Donald Trump's very bad, awful, horrible week, you know. Um, and the New York Times is sticking with the kind of standard New York Times type political analysis story. But it's the shading within the story. I, I, I guess I would say the angling is more overtly anti-Trump more often in the Washington Post. The, the very lead paragraph i the, the interesting the interesting side just in terms of web strategy it's not bias is the hill which is doing really well in sort of beating the pants off politico which has much more a higher media presence and they just do hundreds of little stories every time trump sort of cops there's a short story trump just cop mm -hmm. uh it's not bias so much as it's it's uh it's just like inundating uh, with with a lot of little stories and yeah, that's, and I post doesn't seem to be onto that. And I should say that in general, people overestimate the extent to which de facto, well, what seems like bias is really bias, as opposed to being sensationalism or chasing traffic or whatever. And I should concede that some of what I'm talking about may be more about chasing traffic well, than like they, they never do pro-Trump sensationalism, or very, only very rarely. Yeah. Uh, so, so they, 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 you know, one day they will do an article, here's why Trump's going to win. You know, they'll, they'll do that once a month, and they'll do 50 articles saying this is why Trump is, you know, un, an unprecedented loser. Yeah. So um, the interesting scenario, and we really will end after this, is... Um, uh, if it, there's a 269 versus 269 possibility, which would throw it into the House of Representatives, uh, and at that point, it's organized by state, the House votes state by state, and is it possible that Paul Ryan would sell out Trump and throw it to Hillary? That's the interesting possibility in my mind. 
Whoa. You're thinking way ahead of me. Um, huh? anyway. So, should we have time in the future? At some point, I want to address with you the, the, the biggest question. Like, is this just like a nationalist versus cosmopolitan, you know, versus, you know, globalization thing that's going to play out for a long, long time to come and restructure the parties fundamentally, which I think may be the case. But we'll, I resist that, but it could happen. I mean, yeah. it's certainly, the, it's certainly the, the most useful framework for figuring out how Trump is different from everybody else. Yeah. But um, anyway, okay. So... Anyway, this was fun, and if we've established nothing other than that you do, in fact, support Trump, I think it's been very, a very valuable exercise. We haven't make... established that, Bob. What? We haven't established that. You I mean the part where you said <laughs> the reason I'm for Trump didn't? Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't call that clip to anyone's attention, I, Mickey. Or, Least I of all Jim Fallows and sense, John Alter. I, I would like his issues on which he gives voice to issues that haven't been raised to achieve a wide audience. Trump? In, in that sense, I'm for him. And I may end up voting for him. I haven't decided. Okay, well, we will certainly stay tuned. Thank you, Mickey. Okay, thanks, Bob. See ya.